I present to you the... I'm not even going to introduce him and all his accolades. I'm going to let him do that. But let's just give it up for Tyler Hill. Hey, hey. Awesome. Uh, Thanks, y'all, for showing up and coming out in the friggin' cold and chilling, uh, literally chilling. Um, yeah, my name is, uh, my name's Tyler Hill. A, uh, and, uh, this is, uh, this is my wife and I, uh, Chelsea and I, we live here in Colorado Springs and we love this city so damn much. We love living here. We love, uh, especially downtown. Uh, we love the people here. We love what's happening in this city. We love how it's evolving and, and what's just really what it's becoming. We are so um, proud to be from here. We're so excited to be from here. Um, my wife, she works for a uh, an incredible organization called the Dream Centers of Colorado Springs. They do a couple projects uh, around town. Their main goal is to really restore the dreams of people who whose dreams have been kind of stolen from them due to just really bad circumstances and, and things. And so they have a completely free women's clinic um, where women who are uninsured or underinsured can get uh, health care, uh, the whole kit and caboodle. Um, it's incredible. Uh, they also have a home, a transitional home for single homeless moms who are exiting homelessness and program where they can get counseling and health care and, and child care and help them get jobs and training. It's it's super dope. She works there. She's uh, She works with all the executives and she meets with all these important people. Um, and all I do is make coffee really for a living. Um, and uh, yeah, so I uh, I do coffee um, and I've been making coffee for, for quite some time now. Uh, but most in maybe the last four or five years, it's really become an important part of my life. It's become pretty much a central part of my life. I, uh, I'm a barista competitor. I travel and, and compete in this like really nerdy barista circuit. Uh, and, uh, most recently, uh, my team and I, uh, placed 12th in the nation, um, at the barista competition. We're getting ready to start that whole rodeo again. Um, so yeah, but uh, maybe more of the thing that you guys are familiar with is that uh, I'm one of the six people who own and operate uh, Loyal Coffee. Uh, Loyal Coffee, we say, is a barista-owned and operated coffee company. And you did hear that right. There are six of us who own it, and we all equally own it. And uh, we all have equal say. We all have equal voting rights. We all It's, it's equal, and it's, uh, it's pretty nuts. Um, we've been open for a little while now. We've been working on this project for a significant amount of time, and um, yeah. So here's all here's all six of us, um, all six of the owners here, and um, just some of my some of my greatest friends, um, you know, that I've ever made. And it's a it's an incredible it's an incredible thing that we've been able to kind of do. Um, you know, when when I tell somebody, yo, like I I own and operate a coffee shop with six other people. They'll say, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. They'll say, you are a fool. Why would you work with your friends? Why would you work with not only one other person, but five other people? And then maybe a few other people will say, you know, that, that sounds kind of awesome. It sounds like it's maybe inspiring. Can't believe that, that you're able to do that. That's really awesome. And the reality is, is they are both right. Uh, so far, I've learned. It's been incredibly difficult and incredibly hard. And it's been the most rewarding thing I've ever done. Uh, so that's kind of what I want to talk about tonight as we kind of intro into this. Uh, I'm going to talk about collaboration a little bit. And what does that look like? How, what are some of the things that we've done as a group to collaborate and work really well together and succeed a little bit? And uh, what does that look like uh, to, to really work with other people? Maybe that's you working with another client, just one client. Maybe that's uh, working with one or two other other business partners or trying to start a project with some other people. I'll just give you a little insight to some of the tricks of the trade, I suppose, that we've been able to execute on our journey towards opening uh, this coffee shop. Then, And then we'll kind of segue just quickly into a few of my like personal areas uh, where I where I lead at Loyal and some of the decisions that I get to make and, and, and kind of give you a window just into my brain and some of my brain space. Does that sound good? We doing all right? Uh, and first of all, as well, just real quick... Uh, Med props to Lee Spirits and welcome fellow and Adam and Jeremy and everybody around uh, for, for hosting me and hosting this event. 
super awesome. So I can remember, I can remember two very specific moments on our journey when we were opening Loyal. Two very profound nights that we had. Both of those nights involved us sitting in a circle uh, as a group, all looking at one another. Um, the first night we sat in a circle, and um, and the person in the in the chair, like the person of focus in the circle, was the one that got to talk. And everybody else listened to that person in the circle. And what we did is we spent an entire night with no expectations, no time. The meeting could go as long as was necessary. And each person shared uh, the answer to a question. And the question was, why did you choose service? When we say, why did you choose service? The question really is, why did you choose to work in the service industry? Because the service industry is really hard. It's not, it's not easy. Your lifestyle is different. You work, when you work the, hour, the hours that everybody else plays, like you work those, right? The, the, the nights that are fun for everybody else, those are the ones you get to work. You get to deal with people at their best days and at their worst days. The service industry is incredibly difficult. And so for somebody to say, you know what, I'm going to make this my career. I'm going to do this for the, my whole life. There really is a story behind that. There has to be a pretty significant reason as to why somebody would say, you know what, I'm going to do something that's this difficult, this hard, that's going to take this long. And so we got to sit here and hear that story from each person. So, so I sat there and I told, I told the group a story. I told them about how my mom has been sick my entire life. My mom had cancer when she was 12 and um, and as a result of her cancer, she's, it's just, it's just made her very, very sick. And growing up, I got to watch my dad take care of my mom really, really well. My dad selflessly and unconditionally loved and served my mom, uh, no matter how sick she ever was. Um, we've seen my mom die three times and kind of come back. Uh, and so watching my dad, uh, no matter what the circumstances were, no matter how sick she was, no matter if, if he thought she was going to die, he, he remained faithful to her. He loved her really, really well. And he served her whatever my mom needed, my dad did for her. So as a child, literally from birth, growing all the way up, I watched my dad serve my mom. And that became an incredibly foundational part of who I am today, watching somebody serve and love just selflessly and unconditionally. And so, you know, when we, when, when I'm sitting in a, in, a, in a team meeting with my group and, you know, I'm getting really passionate about an idea, about service in the cafe and one of me and one of my team members, we're maybe, we're maybe button heads a little bit and we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not on the same page, right? And we're arguing a little bit and, and it gets a little bit heated and we're just going and we probably don't even know what we're talking about for a little bit. There's always been a moment so far up to this point where we've all been able to take a moment and take a deep breath and sit back and say, you know what, like the other team members can say, you know what, there's probably a reason Tyler is so passionate about this. He really loves service and, and there's a reason he loves service. It's deeper than him just thinking he has the best idea. He really wants to serve people and it, and it really goes down to his childhood and his mom and oh my gosh, why am I screaming? There's no need for that. This is deeper than just trying to see who has the best idea. And I get to do that with my other team members because I know why they're doing it. You see, I think so often, you know, we, understanding the why, you know, we're, understanding the why opens up some doors. It opens up the doors for grace. It opens up the door for understanding. You know, it opens up the doors for patience. You see, too often we're concerned with what people can do, not why they can do it, not why they're doing it. So I wonder if when we're working with, with our friends, when we're working with, with clients, when we're working with other partners, if we spent more time trying to understand and learn why, why are they doing what they do? Why do they want to work with us? Why, why are they even in this industry, whatever industry it is? Too often, I think, when we start collaborating with somebody, we're just so concerned with what, what they can do, not why they can do it, and it really sets you off on the wrong foot. So I think for us, really understanding the why is so important. When I'm hiring somebody, and if you were to sit down, and maybe I'm giving away a little industry secret, but if you come and you sit down across from me at the table and you say, I can make this much latte art, and 
I've done this good in these competitions and I'm so good at this and I'm so good at that and I'm just the shit, I'm probably not going to hire you. Because I don't really care about what you can do. I can, I can teach any monkey how to make coffee. It's not that hard really, right? But here's the difference is, 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 is I really want to know why. Why do you want to work at Loyal Coffee? Because at Loyal Coffee, we really love people and we really want to serve people well. We love this city to death. And if you can't tell me that you love people and that you're doing this because you love people, and if you don't have an example of how you love people and why you love people, what you can do doesn't really matter too much. So, so for us to, to sit down as a group and say, you know what, we want to know why. Why, want to, why. why are we in this together? That was the first and most important thing for us. The second thing we did, the second most monumental night for us, uh, so we still sat in the circle. But then the person that sat on the chair uh, didn't get to talk at all. They didn't get to say a word. And this was also a night and a time where there was no, there was no time limit. There was no restrictions. Uh, the only thing we did is we gave job descriptions to the person sitting in the chair. We told them what we thought about them. We told them how we've seen them succeed in the past. We told, we told them what, 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 what we admired about them. We told them what we think they would be good at, at Loyal. You know, it, it, was, it was an incredible time uh, to, to be there. I can just remember sitting there and feel so, feeling so blessed by my team. Felt so lucky to be there. Because I sat there and they told me what they thought about me. And they told me some really nice things. And then I got to tell the things that I admired about the other people on my team to them. You see, it, it, it affirmed that everyone should be there on the team. And I wonder if, if, if when, you, when you have a client or when you work with somebody or you're working on a special project, how often do those people not even know that you're excited that they're there? Like, did, did you even tell them that? Or are you just talking about what you can do, not why, and you don't affirm it? You see, it's impossible to have collaboration without affirmation. I think for us to, to take the time to truly affirm one another, it's truly impossible for us to collaborate. And you know what? It, you can't have collaboration without affirmation because it's isolation. I think you're isolating people. If you don't affirm what they're good at, and if they don't affirm what you're good at, man, you're just isolating people. It's only about you all of a sudden. It's not really collaboration. And so taking the time, and, and we try our very best at Loyal to take time to truly affirm one another and say, man, I'm so proud of you. I saw what you did, how you treated that guest. I saw how you remembered that name to make habits of affirming one another, to make it a pattern in your life to affirm one another's gifts. Makes it possible to truly collaborate in, a, in an incredibly successful way. So when I sat there, and man, I, I just... I'm so thankful for, for those two moments. And, and those really set us up, I think, to, to truly work with one another. Now, for me, one of the things that a lot of the people had noticed, and they were right, and, and these were some of the things that, that really had opened the doors uh, for me in Loyal is, is that I love, um, I love creating guest experiences. And they talked about, when they were talking to me, they talked to me a lot about how how much, I, how much I loved the details and how much I loved, I thought, I think about just the most random and wild little details when it comes to a guest experience in the cafe. I love creating great experiences. I love experiencing great experiences. I love to go to restaurants. And, you, and you'll know, the first thing I do when I go to restaurants is I go to the bathroom. Not because I have to go, but I just, I just want to see if they even cared about the bathroom. Because I think it's so cool when somebody thought about all the details and then they made the bathroom really dope. It's like awesome. Or you look at the handle on the front door and it's like really awesome. And you're like, wow, they thought about all the details. And this, the texture of this handle is cooler. The spoon feels really nice. Like, holy crap, the food's probably going to be good. And I don't really care because the bathroom's awesome anyways. And I already tweeted about the bathroom from the bathroom. I just love, I love all of those details, right? My favorite place in the universe is Disneyland. I love that place to death. Uh, my wife and I have been married for like three years, and we've gone like six times or something. Um, I've got a Mickey Mouse tattoo and like Peter Pan's hat on here. I love Disneyland. And the reality is, is I love it because they've created such an incredible guest experience. From the minute you're in the parking lot, you know, it's, it's just so well thought out. And the reality is for all of us, we create different kinds of experiences. Whatever field you're in, 
what other career you have, you're creating an experience for somebody. Whether, whether you're like a secretary or an assistant and you're just trying to organize things and make it more simple for people to find information, that's an experience that somebody gets to have and an experience that you're trying to execute. Maybe, maybe you're coding a, a website or an app. It's clearly an experience, right? The way you talk to somebody on the phone, maybe you're at a call center, right? The way you talk to somebody in the language you use, that's an experience somebody gets to have. We all get a chance to to really develop and create experiences for people, no matter what we're doing. It doesn't have to just be in a restaurant or in a space. We get to really create experiences for other people, and, and, and all of us are doing that. So my question to you tonight is I want us to kind of think about just a little bit. When you've been trying to create an experience, when you've been trying to execute a project, think about the time when you've really poured your heart into something You've really tried to execute it well. You tried to make a good experience for somebody. Maybe it even was a dinner party. Maybe it was a website you're trying to build. And you just failed miserably. Think about that. Like You just tried so hard. And you just failed. Right? We can all think about that. It's not hard. We all suck a little. It's okay to admit it. Right? Like we've all, we've all failed miserably at certain points. Oh, man, I can just think of, of so many of these of these times, man, you know, you tried to make something stunning and it came out just sterile, right? You tried to make something just perfect and it came out poisonous, right? Like, like that's a really, really real thing. And I've done that a lot over the years. I've done loyal isn't my only project that I've, that I've tried to execute and dream up. And, and the truth is, is even at loyal, we've failed a lot so far. We've done a lot of great things. And there's a lot of things that you probably haven't seen that we have failed miserably at. But I think there's a, there's a core question, a core thing that I've learned often that when we're trying to create an experience in our work, whether that's building a bar, building a coffee shop, whether that's writing a book, whether that's how we're talking on the phone to somebody, I think oftentimes when we're trying to create an experience, there's something that, that lacks when we fail oftentimes. I think it's kind of one of those underlying core things. You know, I wonder... I'll just I'll just say it. I think too often we try to create an experience without humanity. That we get so excited about making something perfect. That we get so excited about trying to be the best at this thing. We get so excited about trying to stand out. We get so excited about trying to be different. We get so excited and we just get so passionate and we leave the humanity out of it. I wonder if, if this idea of what we think is best and want, you know, if it really is what's best for everyone. When creating a coffee shop, it's very easy to think, I know what's best. I've worked in coffee for a really long time. I know what I love. I know what I like. I know what I think is the best for everybody in this city, right? And we're trying to create this perfect thing. But, but oftentimes when people are making coffee shops or they're making websites or they're making apps, what lens do they look at that thing through? Oftentimes you're looking at it through your own lens or you're trying to just impress your other app developer friends or you're trying to impress your other coffee people friends. But really, the people that are coming into your co coffee shop usually isn't coffee people. It is a little bit. But mostly it's not coffee people. Or the people that go on your website that you made isn't people who build websites. It's people that use websites. And those are entirely two different kinds of people, right? And I think so often we, we, we leave the humanity out of it when we're trying to create an experience for someone. <laughs> You know, maybe it's rooted, this idea of, of leaving the humanity out on accident is maybe rooted back to something that all of our grandmas taught us. And that's the, the golden rule, right? Treat others how you want to be treated, which is a pretty good rule, I suppose, right? Most people will do the right thing if they treat somebody how they want to be treated. But I wonder, um, but I wonder if we changed it. Um, at Loyal Coffee, we call this the Platinum Rule. And the Platinum Rule, um, after this phrase, real quick. See, what you think and what you want is important and valuable, but you're not the only human in humanity. Again, we're coming up with all these ideas, but you're not the only one there. We gotta look at these things through these other lens. But the Platinum Rule is this. Treat others how they want to be treated. What, is it, what, is it, what would it look like if we, if we really looked at, at the people that we get to interact with at work and at school and in our marriages and, 
and with our friends, we said, you know, how, how, how does this person really want to be treated? Not just how I want to be treated, but, but how do they want to be treated? How does the guest in my cafe want to be treated, really? And this is a hard question to ask. And there's so much into this question. We can talk about this a little bit more in the question and answer. But you see, every person that comes into our cafe is different. We call, we call the guests that come into our cafe VI, VIPs. Very important, very individual people. Because you see, every person that comes into your cafe has a different need. If we're really tr truly going to respect humanity, we need to understand and realize that the clients we have, the partners we work with, that they're not all the same. They grew up in different places. They have different stories. They have different wounds. They're incredibly different people. They're all incredibly diverse. And if we're all going to try to treat everyone the same, that's to strip the humanity away from them and say, you're not an, an individual. Maybe you're, I think you're important because you're going to give me money or something. But, but you know what? They are VI, very important, very individual people. How can we, when we're, when we're working through an experience, creating an experience for someone, how can we give them the dignity to understand and realize that they're an individual? that they have their own specific needs. You know, I, I think about, you know, you see so many things when you open a coffee shop. You see people at their worst and their best. There's an example of this. You see, oh, running a coffee shop the day after the Broncos win the Super Bowl was very different than running a coffee shop the day after Donald Trump gets elected president. It's kind of a joke, but, but it's kind of serious. The day after the Broncos win the Super Bowl, you get to give away free shots of tequila in the morning. But the day after Donald Trump gets elected president, you have people weeping in your coffee shop. You have people that are scared. You have, you, you have, you have people, people that, that don't know what's going to go on. And then you have people on the other side that are incredibly excited at the same time. And they're really proud. And, 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 and then you got to navigate. How do you, how do you treat both, serve both of those people at the same time in their cafe? Some that are brokenhearted and hurt and some that are excited and celebrating all at the same time. The needs of both of those people in that moment are incredibly different. And yet in a coffee shop, it's our job to serve them well and treat them with humanity and treat them with dignity. You see what I'm getting at? But if we were to give them the exact same service, both of those people... Neither one of their experiences in Loyal would probably be that good. And maybe they wouldn't come back. But the reality is, is, is we want to try to give people dignity. We want to treat them as a very important and a very individual person. We want to treat others how they want to be treated. So I wonder, I wonder what would happen if, if we spent more time learning why people do what they do. Why are you doing this? I wonder if we learn those things and we affirm their gifts. We affirm the skills and the passions of the people around us? What if we treat others how they want to be treated? I think maybe, just maybe then, you could open a coffee shop with five other people. And it might be, it might, it might do all right. You might just survive. And so uh, with that being said, uh, man, it's possible to collaborate. It's, it's possible to work with a lot of people. It's possible to work with people that are different than you. But, but give them dignity. Affirm their gifts and skills. Believe in them. Ask them why. And I think we'll all be we'll all be a little bit alright. We'll all survive. Thank you. Thank you.